welcome back to my Minecraft survival series where we are building in this amazing cherry blossom valley area and today we are going to work on a proper home for our sniffers which will also have an automatic seed collection. Of course eventually I'm going to have lots of sniffers free roaming around but in order for us to get a lot of sniffers we need a good way to collect up the seeds that they dig up so we need to build somewhere for them to go for now to be contained and have an automatic collection system to go underneath. And here are our little snifflets. How are our snifflets doing? You guys doing good? They haven't grown up yet. I've just literally hatched them in the end of the last episode and they will hopefully grow up very soon and start digging up seeds for us. But before we can get building, we have this big annoying gap over here and this kind of weird awkward bit of land that sort of sticks out here if we take a look from the other side as well it's kind of just in the way like the rest of the land is low and it is here and there's just this bit of dirt that's kind of sticking up and a big gap in the floor over here and i'm planning to cover up all of the holes and gaps into the caves around in this area anyway so i think what we're going to do before we actually get started building i think this will be a really good spot for our build to go, but we need to do a bit of terraforming first in order to cover up this hole and kind of make this awkward bit of land just look a teeny little bit better and a bit more smooth flowing. I basically just want it to be a much softer shape and like a smooth dip of a valley instead of this kind of jagged cliff edge that we have going on right now. Well, that was almost two hours of digging, but there is so much more space here now, so it was definitely worth it. We can use this space for all of the builds that we're gonna do in this area. And the sniffers have grown up whilst I was digging and they have been collecting seeds. I've grabbed a few seeds from them as well, which is a really good start. Now, all we need to do is collect up the resources we need to build their sniffer farm, which is gonna go over here. I think this will be a perfect spot for it. So let's go chop down some of these trees and gather up the resources we need. So I think we have just about everything we need to start building now and we want this barn to be fairly big because it's got to fit the sniffers in it. Let's take a look. Is that the right positioning that we want? Yeah, I think that's going to look okay. And I'm going to make this mostly out of wood. This is kind of more like a barn sort of style build. I want it to kind of have a bit of a different style to our starter house over there. That's like a house and this is more of an animal barn so we're gonna have a slightly different style slightly different colors but definitely still in the same theme we are going to keep the roof trim the same dark oak color as on the main starter house i think that will be a nice tie in to over there but we're gonna have more of a dome shaped roof like so and we're gonna have a green mossy roof and we're gonna bone meal this so it looks like it's all growing and I think this will make for a really nice texture on a barn roof for the snippers. And we're gonna break up some of this moss with the new bamboo block. This is the unstripped version which is nice and green and I think will fit really nicely in amongst some of the moths in this roof. Just a couple of pieces of this glazed green terracotta. I think that's gonna fit in really nicely as well. And just helps to give our roof a, a little bit more texture, a bit more interesting than just straight moss. We will of course bone mill this in just a second. And lastly, we are going to just add some flowers in here and we're gonna bone mill all of the moss. We don't want the trees, we just want 
moss and grass. I like how this roof is looking, but I think it just needs a little bit more detail. It needs something else to it. So I'm going to just add, can I get to here? So I'm going to add in um, a little bit of a tower in the middle. Let's try and find the middle to start with. And the same moss roof to go up here as well. And I think that has turned out pretty nicely. I like the roof shape, I like the texture, the, the green roof, I think it really is very different from the pink roof and I like that and the barn shape I think works really well. There is plenty of space in here for the sniffers to roam around and, and dig up seeds for us. I didn't want it to be too big because the next thing we're going to do is dig out the floor and put railings underneath all of it so that it can automatically pick up any of the seeds that get dropped by our sniffers. So now we have rails all the way under here. We'll cover this over with dirt again, but we can put a collection system in here. We're gonna have a hopper and then we just run the railing over there. And then the hopper minecart will drop off anything it picks up when it comes over here. I don't think we need any redstone circuits to stop the cart to unload because there's not going to be that many seeds very that frequently, so I think we'll be fine. And there we go, the hopper minecart is making its way all the way around. Let's test the collection system, see if it picks it up and drops it off. Yes, it's dropping things off into the chest. It's not very fast, but the sniffers don't dig up seeds very often, so this should be fine. Now we just have to cover over the ground again so that we can let the sniffers into their new home. To make this a little bit cosier, I'm going to put some moss in the back of the enclosure. This can be kind of like a bed area for them. I think that will be nice and cute. And let's bring the sniffers on over to their new home. Let's grab some of these to get them to be interested. Oh, you've got another one as well. I have got a brand new home for you. Follow me this way. They are incredibly slow. <laughs> not even that far come on these guys are so slow can you get through these can you get through these yes come on and there we go both our snippers are in their new home let's make another baby sniffer <gasps> did you lay an egg where is it there it is, there it is. And you laid an egg as well, thank you. Now I'm gonna leave you to collect your seeds up. We already have three torch flower seeds and five pitcher pods. I'm gonna leave these sniffers to dig up some more seeds and we will come back later to see how well they've gotten on. So I added this extra bit of the building on just to hide our collection area. You can see we're definitely picking up a few seeds. And I think that this sniffer barn is now looking really cute. I added some lanterns around and just a few little extra details just to make it a bit more interesting and light it all up to keep it mob proof hopefully. And I'm really happy with how this has turned out. Our sniffers seem to be having a good time in here as well. And now we have got our starter house, our sniffer barn, and our mine entrance. So we've got three different places in this valley, and I think it's about time that we get some pathways in here to kind of join all of these together. I started building a pathway from the front of the house here, so this is kind of the design for the path that we're going to use in the valley area. But I think we also need to connect up here. This is the entrance to the valley. This is the only point in the whole thing where the mountains dip down and there is a gap. So I'd like to have some kind of fence here eventually, like a, a wall or a gateway or something to stop people from just being able to get in. And I think it would be good to have a main pathway that comes down from the entrance here. And then we have these mud brick pathways that branch off from that main pathway that take us to the various little areas in the valley. I've moved the animals out of the way and I have put down some stone bricks to kind of plan out where this main pathway is going to go. 
I want this path to be kind of like an older path before that was here before maybe these buildings were here and it's going to lead down to hopefully kind of a bigger build that I've got planned for the very middle of the valley down there and that build is going to be more like a ruin left over from a previous time and I want this path to kind of be the path that was also left over from that ruin time. So we're going for lots of stone brick, lots of cracked and mossy stone brick and then right on the edges we just dig a little bit more out. We're going to go with mossy cobble as well so it's kind of like it's been worn away, it's like it's it's eroded, it's been used a lot and it's kind of just getting overgrown and worn out from being here for a really long time and being used and then not taken care of because it's fallen into disrepair. The building down there has been abandoned and then these mud brick paths are going to be slightly newer. These buildings are going to be sort of new additions to the valley or slightly newer than the build we're going to put in the middle there but they're not they're still not super polished because this is still kind of an overgrown area in general and we don't want it to be too tidy but they are less mossy and overgrown slightly just because they're newer and they're more used. I ran out of mud so I'm just going to come round to our little uh, well here and this is where I've been making the mud just using the water to turn the dirt into mud and then we scoop it up and we can just replace it with dirt and then continue to turn it into mud. This is how I've been getting all of my mud. <laughs> we have got some nice pathways in. I might actually put this bit might turn into a bridge. I'm thinking about having a waterfall coming along here in this natural dip so maybe this part will just be a bridge anyway but for now it's working as a nice path. We have everything joined up and linked together and it's nice and easy to walk along because we have got the uh, slabs to make everything easily just runnable without having to jump as well. Of course we have to make sure this is all mob proof too and I really hate this torch spam so what we're gonna do, what we've done over here is hide some lighting under the moss carpets. Yep, that's one. I'm gonna continue that around this area as well, just so that we get some proper lighting and it doesn't just look like this. Torches all over the place, everywhere. We have a lot more of the pink petals here underneath this cherry blossom tree because that's where they'd be falling from the tree and then we do have some round on the ground as well and we have some of these white flowers and just generally grass and moss all kind of spread around and I have left some gaps because there's definitely still some building that I want to do in this area so I didn't want to fill up all of the grass space with this texturing but this is what will be filling the space in between the buildings and we'll continue this around new buildings as we put them in. I've added it in around this new building over here. So the sniffer farm now also has a bunch of grass and flowers and things growing around it which looks really cute. It really makes it blend in with the rest of the environment. Ah, but we only have two nether bricks left over from building the tree before so I think we'll do a quick trip to the nether. Okay, we just need to grab some netherrack. Oh, we're up in the air and it's the worst place. Oh no. Oh no. No, no, no. Ugh. Yeah, this is, it's not a great spawn point here, really. And then we can just smelt up all of this netherrack so that we can make some more nether bricks to make nether brick fences and while we wait for those to smell up I'm gonna head over here and check on our collection system. Oh it's doing really well we've got lots of seeds let's take a couple of these and get another sniffer egg from our little sniffers over here. Hello would you like to make another sniffer baby? There we go we're gonna have so many sniffers by the end of this. I'm going to just keep breeding up those sniffers every 10 minutes or so, however frequently we can breed them. And then we'll start just collecting up lots of eggs so that 
when we want to hatch more eggs, we'll have a whole bunch gathered up already. I don't actually have very many cherry leaves, so the other thing we can do while we wait for those to smelt is go and collect up some more leaves. I'm probably going to take down most of the naturally generated cherry trees anyway because I want to build custom cherry trees so we might as well just take this one down while we're here while we've taken half of the leaves. That should be enough cherry leaves at least for, for a little while. So on our starter house here we've done quite a big custom cherry tree or kind of a, a medium size cherry tree. This is supposed to be fully grown but I think over here I kind of want to do some different stages of growth trees so I think I'm actually going to do some more sapling sort of size cherry trees so if we just instead of using any of the cherry wood we're just going to use the nether bricks and keep them very spindly and tall and just something like that I think that looks really cute actually so I think we're going to have a few of these sort of lining this pathway to the sniffer farm maybe maybe four actually i'm not sure that i like them lining the path like this they're kind of blocking the view of the building and it just feels a bit cramped in here so i think let's take them down let's try it some different positions for these trees i do kind of like that one there and maybe we put one over here instead yeah i like that one over there i think that looks good and then maybe we just have one more over here somewhere yeah, those are definitely some better positionings for the trees and then we can see the whole build as well. And I'm, I think I'm going to have a river coming down here, so maybe we end up putting a couple more along the river bank as well. Once we get that river, once we know where the river's going to go. I might actually want one more bigger cherry tree, like the one on the starter house just behind, like sticking up over the top of the roof here. I think that might look good. Let's give that a try and see how it looks. We could never have too many cherry trees. So we need the tree to be tall enough that we can see it over the top of this building. Well, that's all the fence posts I have, so I guess we are done. Let's take a look from the front of the building. Once we get some leaves on that, that would be perfect. I, would, I don't want it to be totally visible, but just sort of peeking out from behind. And of course we need to absolutely cover the ground underneath this tree with the pink petals. And the same under these ones, we're going to need way more bone meal and way more pink petals than this. Well, that is me totally out of pink petals and bone meal, but I think that this is looking really nice now. Adding these trees has really helped to bring this building in to fit in with the rest of the biome, even though there isn't really any pink in the build itself. There's not really any cherry wood except for the door right there. Let's move the bed out of the way. <laughs> But having these little cherry trees around it really just helps to kind of blend it in. I think the mossy roof helps as well. It makes it seem very naturey. but I think this is looking super cute now. And this is the second custom cherry tree that we've made and I've tried to make it slightly different from the first one and I think it's turned out really nice. Kind of similar, kind of different. I definitely need to get a whole bunch more of these pink petals to really fill out the ground underneath the tree we'll have to do something about some kind of bone mill farm so that we can keep getting all of the petals that we want to get in this world and this is definitely a much better placement for these little trees than we had before we can walk up and see the whole build I think I'll put some more of these smaller cherry trees around in the valley as well because I think they look really cute and I like that there's kind of different stages with the big cherry trees and the little cherry trees. And then eventually we maybe will even do an enormous cherry tree somewhere. And this has been a really fun episode to make to get to play with the sniffers and build them a lovely cozy home. Let's see if we've got some more seeds. Let's do a little bit more. Yes. See if we can get another egg from them. Our sniffer army is going to begin to grow very soon. There's another baby. 
another sniffer egg. Add it to the collection. I'm really excited for these sniffers to be able to roam freely around this valley once we have finished closing off all of the weird caves and holes in the ground all over the place. We're gonna have sniffers just roaming free and it's gonna be amazing. But for now, this barn is a really cute home for them. I'm really happy, they seem happy. So thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me while we build this sniffer seed farm. Let me know what you think of this new build and the little cherry trees that we've got going on here as well. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.